Welcome to Level Up Tribes. Level Up Tribes provides resources to help you attain the necessary resources to level up your mind, body, and soul and realize your full potential. It is about exploring, learning, providing you with the tools from the experts for you to create a better version of yourself. I am your host, Agnes Goodwine, and welcome tribes. There are different modalities of yoga, and here at Level Up Tries Podcast, we have covered Kundalini Yoga and Vinyasa Yoga, and so I'm very excited to learn all about Nam Yoga today with Dr. Nicole Coyle. Dr. Coyle is owner-director of Nam Yoga Arizona Center for the Healing Arts here in Mesa, Arizona. She is a devoted, longtime student of Dr. Joseph Michael Lebre, the founder of Nam Yoga. She has been teaching divine spiritual wisdom, yoga, and meditation for 25 years and believes that through divine spiritual wisdom and vibration of Nam Yoga, one learns how to activate the self-healing mechanism of oneself, creating permanent healing. Let's dive right in into the episode. Welcome, Dr. Nicole Coyle, to Level Up Tribe. Thank you. <laughs> we are laughing because you want to tell it? Sure. Um, <laughs> we recorded this podcast in September at my um, wellness center, Nam Yoga Arizona, and um, we did like an hour. It was like an hour and a half, yes. wasn't it? Yes. And it flowed seamlessly. And then well, when you listened to it, it didn't record you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, no matter what, we couldn't get it to work. And then you just arrived and set up all of your stuff again. And your microphone <laughs> wouldn't work again. <laughs> and I swear to you, it's the energy from all of the music that we use in Nam Yoga because it raises the frequency very high. And electronics have this penchant of shorting out here <laughs> um so welcome <laughs> i love it yeah there's so much energy in this yoga center it, i'm not even kidding you guys it's, it's amazing just don't bring your electronics with you <laughs> exactly so let's get this started i'm so excited that we connected again i know i'm so happy you're oh here oh my god and so let's start you know from your story how you got connected to yoga and how you met dr levery who is the founder of nam yoga yeah um sure so i took a yoga class in college 30 years ago as an elective uh, to fulfill a requirement and kind of fell in love with the process of yoga and i was struggling at the time and um and then started to take traditional yoga classes like asana based and i in my early 20s i was diagnosed with bipolar 2 and i was struggling at the time and taking medication and not really feeling great and yoga was helping definitely and um uh, about the age of 28 or 29 a friend of mine uh, recommended i go to this yoga class with her in new york city i was living in connecticut and i thought not another yoga class you know <laughs> and um she said no it's different and at the time i hadn't left my house in a couple of weeks i was um, really depressed and mm -hmm. couldn't get out of it and um i always owned my own businesses for that reason right because i knew my tendencies so i go to this yoga class in new york city it's like an hour and a half drive and we walk in and I have no idea what to expect because I think I'm going to do pose-based yoga yeah. and this man walks up on stage with this white like caftan on <laughs> and with a French accent and we start doing this practice called Nam Yoga which is frequency-based work sound vibration pranayama which is breath exercise to create a specific rhythm and harmony internally and work on the brain patterning. And within the first half hour, I was bawling like a child and couldn't figure out why. Yeah. And um, he was teaching the class, and I think it was somewhere almost three hours, the class, two and a half hours. And pretty much the whole time I was crying or laughing. And then at the end, I felt so good, like so alive. Yeah. And I felt more life force in me than I had in a really long time. I kind of walked out in a stupor like, what the heck did I just do? And asked a bunch of questions when I got out, um, the people who were working the desk and some of the people that were his students at the time. And they explained a little bit more about it. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, I'm, 
uh, we're on to something, right? Yes. So I ended up going to a bunch of classes. I drove all the way from Connecticut to New York City three times a week to take class, mm -hmm. which is an hour and a half in each direction if you're lucky. Oh, my God. And, um, <laughs> and then signed up for teacher training. They were having, like, their official teacher training. And, and then, um, yeah, had this consultation with him and told him my issues about depression and bipolar and um, how I didn't want to be on medication anymore. It was just making me feel worse and kind of no life running through me. Mm -hmm. And um, he said, we can help. And we had a particular practice for it. And I slowly used the practice in order to wean myself off of medication and rebalance my brain. And it works. Um, I can go... You know, I don't do it religiously anymore. Um, yeah. And if I go too long without doing my own individual practice, you can feel it kind of starts to get out of balance again. But I haven't been on medication since. Oh so um, I was awesome. I was kind of hooked after that. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of just did it all the time and then ended up teaching after, you know, after the training. Yeah. So, yeah. So I've been teaching it for a long time now. Do you think that yoga finds you? Oh, I think if, yes, I definitely think it comes into your life at a time when you probably need it the most yeah. um, without knowing it either. You know, I think um, most people are um, drawn to the physical part of yoga, right, as a form of um, tuning up their body and quieting their mind. But I also think on a deeper level, I mean, you could have, the funny thing is, is that yo particular yoga studio that Nam was taught at in New York City, I was working down the street and I walked by it every day for two years. And I never looked at it. It was just like another yoga center. And I didn't know what went on in there. Yeah. And then when I went for the first time, I was like, it cannot be this place because I've literally been walking. So energetically, right, I was mm -hmm. drawn to that location. Yes. But I didn't walk in until I was literally desperate and needing it and somebody brought me. Um, so I really do think that when when it's your time, it presents itself, like all things in life, yes. though, right? Yeah, I think no matter what that is, um, when you're ready and open to receive what it is that they're teaching, then you find it. Because if you found it a couple of years before or you went, it might not have resonated because you were in a different place. Yes. Um, your, your, your consciousness maybe wasn't open enough or uh, you were in the space to understand even what they were talking about and might have thought it was crazy two years before, you know, That's walking true. in with all these people doing this kind of crazy breath work. And yes. I would have thought, like, what the heck? You know? <laughs> but um, at the moment, it was like, I'm out of choices, you know, so yes. I did. Well, yeah. I'm kind of glad that you found you found it. You and, and me both, sister. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's changed my life. Yes. Yeah, totally. I, I stopped doing what I did as a career before that. I was a fashion designer, so... I just kind of weaned out of that, and I've been just teaching Nam ever since as a full-time career. Love yeah, it. yeah. And this Nam Yoga Center here in Mesa, Arizona, is one out of three or four in the world. No, one out of three in the states. Oh, in the states. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in the United States, um, our main center used to be in New York City, and then the main center moved to Santa Monica, and then there's a center still in New York City in a different location, and then we are here in Mesa, and Love that's it. it in the United States. And then in the world, there are um, a few in Mexico. Okay. Um, one in Brazil, uh, one in Argentina. Um, and then there are um, several in Europe, uh, Germany, wow. Prague, Czechoslovakia, um, um, and then uh, Switzerland. And so we're kind of spread out as centers that focus on that modality of yoga. Yes. Um, teachers are also few and far between because we're kind of concentrated either in New York or in LA. Okay. And at the moment, you know, I run the center and teach most of the NOM classes, but we did a teacher training like four years ago and 20 people graduated, but only one works here. Okay. You know, so, um, it was taken most as a life journey instead of like a teaching process, right? Because it's a very enlightening <laughs> journey when you start Nam Yoga teacher yes. training. It kind of illuminates all the things that were unhealed in life. And yes. it's a lot to deal with and look at. So you have to kind of be prepared for that. Yes. Um, yeah. With that being said, can you touch on the different parts of Nam Yoga yeah, sure. that makes it unique? Yeah, sure. So um, in the kind of process of nam yoga or the umbrella of nam yoga um there are different avenues under the umbrella right but as an overall um summary of it it takes 
breath work or pranayama combined with sound vibration, um, so frequency, different frequency vibrations, with mudra therapy, which are hand postures in yoga, with movement, and then it all gets combined in a process during a class, but it also, those components are also combined with something called universal Kabbalah, which is the study of the mathematics of the universe, meaning how we can harmonize ourselves with the laws of nature around us. Oh. So it's about timing. It's about um, particular frequency, right, of the energy around us. It's about harmony. Are we in harmony? Or are we out of harmony with what's happening in our life? And how can we reharmonize ourselves? So we tend to use vibration, sound, um, and breath work to reharmonize ourselves when we're out of balance. And so it's the combination of how Dr. Levy puts it, East and West, the teachings from India, right, to which the pranayama, the breath work, the sound vibration, the mantra, and then the co universal Kabbalah from the West. Um, and he put this into one amazing practice. Mm -hmm. And the word nam, there is nam in, in India. The word nam means the word, yes. sacred word. Yes. So it's the repetition of word to quiet the mind, repetition of word to recalibrate the frequency internally, and then the, the repetition of word to create or manifest the life that you want. So the theory in Nam is that you never use your tongue to tear down, you only use it to uplift. And Love so it. even with yourself, right? And mantra is that it's a reprogramming of mental patterns um, because the tongue is hitting the upper palate and all of these different acupressure points to pattern the brain to work on neural pathways, to find a way out of automatic living and and give us more choices when we meet a struggle or an obstacle instead of choosing the same thing over and over again. So it's this very interesting combination of things. And when you first walk into a class, it does not resemble traditional asana-based yoga. Okay. And Can you take <coughs> us on that journey? It's your first time going into yeah. a non yoga, <laughs> sure. you know, center. What do you expect? So, you know, we, my thing is as long as you have an open heart, you'll be fine. <laughs> if, if you have a very preconceived um, notion of what yoga is, right, then it might be difficult for you. We are honest when you walk into a non yoga class, look, it's not pose based. Um, it is considered more of meditative practice, more yes. of a spiritual practice, that spiritual part of yoga. And, um, you know, yoga has eight limbs in the tree of yoga, and asana or pose is just one of them. And so Nam does once in a while use asana, but not very often. So if you came into a NOM class, right, you'd be seated. Most of the class is done seated, um, some of it's standing. Okay. Um, but we do in the beginning what's called tuning in, which means we all sing the same sound or set of sounds so that the frequency of each person in the room merges and we form a collective of energy. And therefore, we all get what we need regardless of what's happening in life because we've created a new energy together. And then from there, we start our breath exercises and we start our mantra repetition. And that's combined with movement, right? Movement that is rhythmic um, because the brain interprets rhythm, physical rhythm, as you being happy um, mm. or dancing. And so when that happens, the brain releases oxytocin, serotonin, and dopamine, nice. which are the happiness hormones. And so our mood is shifted. Our um, body has more vital energy in it. Yeah. And we feel differently at the end. Yeah. yeah. Some of the services that you do has to do with people with PTSD, yeah. anxiety. Someone that's suffering from those things do you choose the mantras do you choose meditation and is it a combination of all the things that you offer here to help with that um are you speaking if they come to a public class or if they come privately if they come if i'll tell you the honest truth if they come to a public class and there's 20 people in the class um it is in the beginning me sitting there um while we're doing just some basic breath work to yeah. kind of get centered to kind of feel my way into the room and see what do we need today, no matter who's in the room, and generally taking the class from there. Okay. And generally the rule is the vibration that needs it the most, that's where we gear our class towards. Mm. Um, and so it's basically a feeling for me. Privately, if you come, um, it's a little bit of all of it, right? It's going to be a lot of breath work. 
it's going to be mantra. And in the beginning, we'll ask you to just play the mantra in your house. Yeah. Just listen because it's new. And in Nam, we speak in five different languages. So it can be a lot for a brain to handle. And especially if you're a traditional, more conventional person, mantra yeah. isn't comfortable for everybody. True. So we just ask you to listen to the music. Even if it's your first time coming to a public class, we say you can just lay down. You don't have to move at all. You don't have to do anything that we're doing because you need to be in the vibration of the room. Yeah. Right? So the music that we use, this is why it works. The music that we use is composed and recorded by Dr. Levery, who's the founder of NAM, as you mentioned earlier. And he uses very specific mathematical equations, some called the Fibonacci sequence and some called the golden ratio, which are scientifically proven to heal. And so those particular equations are in the composition of his music and so that the music itself is healing and raises the vibrational frequency of a person and can literally shift you out of something just by listening to it changes the room and so if that's where we need to start that's where we need to start you know okay. we'll start slow for sure yeah yeah i tend to especially if there's anxiety or depression yeah. or ptsd not dropping you into a full yeah can be a lot people that are suffer from depression and anxiety do you think that's something that we're born with like it came in like yeah. karmically like or what through is a lineage or something yes um um okay <laughs> sorry um, no that's okay <laughs> i'm happy to answer it i'm gonna try and be as um kind of uh, not open but as clear as i can be based in universal kabbalah which is part of nam um the day you're born <clears throat> there is a particular um energetic sequence of frequency from the planets in the universe right and they have an effect a direct effect on a person and certain planets have a deeper effect mentally and emotionally. And so according to your birthday, it could be that you have a tendency or are prone to depression, right? But, and so yes, I think that you can be born with that tendency more okay. so than anyone else. I do think that if there is a, um, like, bi let's take bipolar, right? Yes. There's depression and manic, depression and manic. And I um, was diagnosed with bipolar too, so that's more depression than mania. And so, and depression is long, bouts of it. Now, it does run in families. We know it. Genetically passed on, um, mental illness can be passed on genetically. However, there's also the study of epigenetics, which means I don't have to, I don't have to have that um, tendency in me just because my mom did or my grandmother mm. did, that I can change my DNA and my internal makeup through my environment. Yes. So I can. I like so if I was born, let's say my mom had um, anxiety disorder or my dad had bipolar, it doesn't mean that I have it. I could if I subscribe to the fact that, oh my gosh, I'm, I might have it. But if I subscribe to the fact that like, no, I'm responsible for my own life and I have the ability to be anything I'd like. And so I'm going to surround myself and do things for myself that are good for my mind, that are healthy for my mind, speak in a way that's uplifting to myself. There is that. And then I also believe so this is just a belief of mine, and people don't have to subscribe to it. But in um, tribal cultures or shamanic cultures, right, where there's a medicine person or a shaman, um, the belief is is that when somebody shows signs of depression or ment what we call as mental illness here in the West, that it isn't a sign that there's an imbalance. There is an imbalance, but that is a sign that the person is more connected to I've heard that. To universal energy. Yes. And that they just don't know how to handle it yes. or harness it for, like, how to use it, I yes. should say. So that in tribal cultures or shamanic cultures, when that's recognized in a younger person, that person is taken and put under the wing of the medicine person or the shaman and taught how to use that energy, right, for good and to heal and to become the teacher. Yes. So my belief is that the people that we think are disconnected or mentally imbalanced, I think have a way deeper connection with universal energy yes. and can hear and see and feel things that we can't 
and we aren't taught how to handle that. Yes. And so 100% agree yeah. with you. So that's my belief on that. Yes. So what can you suggest to someone and you know to this point who is ready to release traumatic pain and old patterns in their attempt to begin to heal from old wounds? The first thing I Cuz you you've been there, yeah, you've done it, you heal from it. That's right. What yeah. what can you tell us? About One is you have to be willing. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you aren't willing to look at it um and sometimes it's painful to look at Right. Um, number two. But what if they don't know how to? Oh, yeah. Okay. So we have, there's beauty in the practice of NAM in that we have specific breath exercises okay. to release trauma from the cellular component of our body, right? When we experience trauma. And trauma doesn't have to be this dramatic, like, life-altering experience. Trauma is anything that affected you adversely. Mm. Anything you took on and then made it your own and it limited you, Mm. right? So it can be anything. Um, And so if you don't know what that is, Mm. but you know you feel stuck or stagnant in life, there are particular breath exercises that can work out the trauma in the body without having to tell a story, without having to do the digging, Mm. without having to like have sessions and talk therapy and not that there's anything wrong with it but sometimes when we don't know where to begin we have to go back to the beginning which is your breath and so because the breath is considered the king of your mind and trauma affects us mentally and emotionally and so in order to rebalance all of that we're just going to go back to the basics which is Mm. breath work so it is where I would start. Yeah, half the time we don't even know how to breathe. No, we're a society so riddled with stress and anxiety, yeah. and we have constant um, bombard- bombardment of just so much stimulus all around us. Yes, and it's just it causes such a, a deterioration of our nervous systems yeah. that we have more trauma now than people ever had Um, and a lot has to do with how much information is accessible to us right through the internet and computers and it's that instant gratification and it's that instant knowing and yeah and um yeah and so who knows where to start most days you know true but breath is the way to get rid of the stress and the anxiety yes because when you're stressed out you are breathing in a very rapid shallow manner Mm -hmm. and that Um, tells the brain, sends a signal to the brain that you're in a state of fight or flight. (laughs) (laughs) And when that happens, then stress hormones are released into the body and they kind of hang out there for up to eight hours a day. So if you have more than two experiences during the course of a day that have stressed you out, (laughs) you have stress hormones coursing through your body and wreaking havoc internally. And so, you know, we just kind of start there. So if you take more, the theory is, is that if you're breathing more than 12 times a minute, you're in a state of stress. And most people are breathing 16 to 20 times a minute. Yes. And that means your brain's like, we're constantly in survival mode. We're constantly yes. in survival mode. And when that happens, um, non-essential functions of the body shut down. Yes. The energy is lessened. Your digestive system right? Not a lot of energy there because you don't need that to survive. Um, brain function, you don't, you know, you're not thinking clearly. It was brain fog because you don't, at the moment, we're just trying to keep you alive because you're stressed out. And so that's a lot of pressure on your heart. Yes. That's a lot of pressure in the lungs and all sorts of health problems come after that. Yes. You know, yeah. I suffer from anxiety, always did since I was a kid. But thanks to yoga and meditation, I'm more self-aware of my breathing. Yeah. (laughs) However, driving gets me. Yeah. And so (laughs) I'm driving the other day and literally I wasn't breathing probably for like 30 seconds. Uh And I caught myself. I'm like, why are you not breathing? Uh What's wrong with you? Yeah. Why does that happen? Why do we subconsciously just do that? So when you're stressed out and you're, and you hold your breath, that kind of feeling. Mm -hmm. So there's a response that goes to the brain that you're in danger. And so all of a sudden it's linked to when we were like cavemen, right? And when you're in danger, you stop and try to hide. And so the less movement you make, the safer you are, right? Or you're fleeing like just like a bat out of hell running. So you tend to hold your breath. Yes. I don't like driving. 
Yeah, it'll, it's very stressful here. And I'm from New York City, and <laughs> this is more stressful out here than New York City, okay. I have to tell you. Yes. Yeah, it's a... I it's, thought I was the only one that thought no. that. Okay. It's hard on the nervous system here, I have to say. Yeah. <laughs> I talk about it a lot here. <laughs> yeah. So when that happens in the car, mm-hmm. right? Like, let's say you feel it coming up in the car as you're driving. Yeah. Um, you're holding onto the steering wheel. There is a way to put your hands on the steering wheel that will calm the nervous system down and stop that um, uh, anxiety attack. Tell it'll, me. It'll stop the anxiety release, the release of the stress hormones. So when you're holding on to the wheel, you can take one hand um, and put. you take your middle finger and you push it down and you put your thumb on the inside of the middle finger towards the webbing, towards the top of the hand. Right, and there's a meridian point there, like an acupressure point, that's linked to your pericardium, which is the muscular sheath around the heart. When you're experiencing anxiety, that muscular sheath contracts, oh. and it makes your heart start to beat faster because it's squeezing your heart. And so, if you put your finger like this and put some pressure, it releases the pericardium, and you're able to take a deep breath. And the anxiety response isn't allowed then to go into its full, complete response, which means you've stopped the release of the stress hormones into the body. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, my pleasure. Oh, yeah, we, we literally it. call it the anxiety attack mudra. For all you have accomplished up to this point in your life, what type of mindset do you feel you have to attain to do so? <laughs> <laughs> fall down nine get up (laughs) ten that's right right so (laughs) i believe that's true um for me especially and i don't say this for like people to go oh but i have had a life filled with lots of struggle and lots of obstacles and just challenge after challenge after challenge and i think every once in a while man it hasn't taken me down yet you know and at the end of the day i always always Um, say to myself I hope today I did my best and that somebody was helped through me and by me and it is what gets me up every day is that every day I see here people um, getting better changing like mood attitude health I mean so many health issues resolved and that when people come here it's a community and it's a safe space and it makes my heart like literally full and I do believe now, I've given it a lot of thought in the last year because some days are such a struggle yeah. and, um, and I keep coming in um, and running the center. But um, at the end of the day, I feel it's my purpose in life yeah. and that it requires sacrifice to do something good in the world sometimes. Yes. So I'm okay with it. And yeah. just no matter what, get up. Because there was a time when I didn't get up, you know, and now it's um, as long as my feet hit the floor, I'm going to be good. It's a good day. Yeah. Yeah. If you could go back to that younger self of yours Mm -hmm. right now, what would you tell her? How would you motivate her? (laughs) At the time, I think when I was younger, I felt very isolated from other people um, and felt like I didn't fit in. And I think that um, worsened the condition. And, and then it makes you believe that you're not good enough somehow or not worthy of what everybody else has or what they're doing. And now if I could talk to her, it's like, it's not about our external stuff. It's Mm -hmm. not about the perceptions that people have of us. It's what's in our heart. And even back then, I know my heart was in the right place. Even at a young age, you know, I used to try to help people <laughs> right <laughs> and um and just I would tell her it's all for a purpose yeah you know, all every single thing I went through was for the right purpose without any step in my journey I definitely wouldn't be here and I wouldn't be who I am and there's a gratitude now in the struggle and in the challenges a, a, an immense gratitude in me Um, because it did make me who I am and there's the beauty in that is that I would love to tell her that you'll get to teach from that space one day that your story someday will be the thing that may inspire somebody to keep getting up to to let them know that like even with that diagnosis of bipolar your life doesn't stop because at the time it feels like a death sentence you know right Um, and it's not and um, like look Every day I run my own business, I have a normal life, and it's going to be worth it. Every single step is going to be worth it because it'll make you strong. 
yeah and resilient which is what we need in life (laughs) yeah it's beautiful yeah how do you stay grounded you are so busy and you have so much going on (laughs) how do you find that space or where do you find that space to stay grounded to stay level and self-care for yourself well i will be honest self-care for me is um, working (laughs) not as much as i should be i'm taking my own advice that I give other people um, to put yourself first and foremost amongst uh, before anybody right because if yeah. your cup isn't full right you're not helping anyone and you're and you're giving from lack basically um, so now I am busy yes I work seven days a week but every once in a while I say I'm not coming in <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I did it last week I got substitutes for my class which means there's not nom probably being taught but we're teaching something yes and it is, I just need a day. I need a day to be quiet and still. Um, it's mostly being still for me um, and with no noise around me. Right. Um, and that is grounding for me. Um, that is what centers me. And at the end of the day, you know, I live about 40 minutes from here. So my drive in and my drive back home yeah. are literally the things that decompress me. Okay. And I do drive on the way home every single night in silence. And what I try to do is replay my day. Mm -hmm. Like, where could I have done better? Where could I have been better? Um, Did I accomplish enough? Whatever that means, you know. Um, Did I hold myself accountable? What do I have to change tomorrow in order to be better than I was today? And when I get home, then this is going to sound so, it's so unyogic, but (laughs) (laughs) when I get home, in order to fully just let go of my day, I have to, I mean, I do, I watch the same show over and over again, and it's literally The Office, (laughs) (laughs) and I've been watching it for years, it's that repetition of not having to think, it's that um, mindlessness that quiets my mind, and there's something about that that lets me just release everything, you know, we deal with a lot of people's um, issues and trauma and health diagnoses here and and i get very invested um and i care a lot about them and um and i need to be able to detach when i get home and that is exactly what i do (laughs) as much as i don't want to admit it i'm not going home and i'm not sitting in a you know on the floor looking at the wall and meditating i meditate in the morning when i get up um i do a particular practice but yeah and so that's what i do i try to try to cut off and take a day every once in a while Good. Yeah. You deserve it. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Are you still doing the pants? I am, yeah. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because sure. I actually love those. <laughs> yeah, sure. So we um we have a little company here at Nam Yoga Arizona. Um we make these pants and the company's called Wrapped in Love. And what we do is we upcycle. Um we take old silk saris from India and silk dresses and we cut them apart and we make um, traditional what are called Thai wrap pants or Thai fisherman pants and they tie in the back and the front and they're reversible and um, (laughs) you can go from yoga to dinner they're very cool (laughs) they're really comfortable Um, they're quite sexy too they're kind of flowy and beautiful but yeah we make them here Um, so I was a fashion designer and it eats at me every once in a while that I'm not making something Um, so it's how I kind of reconciled that that need okay. in me to create something awesome. with fabric so we do it here <laughs> I love it yeah yeah we're trying you know I'm I get I'm a person who needs a lot of different things in my life yeah. to to stay occupied or yes. to stay vested um I don't like repetition um all of the time so I do a lot of different things yeah that's one of them I love it. Yeah. So I think we cover pretty much everything of your services. I hope I didn't miss anything. I think we talked about your life coaching. Or did we talk about your life coaching Um, services that you provide? No, but that's a. You want to cover that a little bit? Sure. So you can come in for a life coach. We we call it Kabbalah consultation, right? The life coaching, Um, which means we are going to look at your birth date um, in the particular way. Um, that the energetic frequencies of planets lined up the day you were born and see what your tendencies are, like your vices and your virtues, right? Like the harmonious and inharmonious aspects 
of those energies and see how they affect the different portions of your life, your daily life, the way you think, your career, your relationship. And then we go from there. And so that looks like getting maybe a meditation practice or a breath work practice, eating specific food, um, because there are foods that can balance energy. Um, and we just kind of work that way. And I do use um, some non non nom yogic practices <laughs> in life coaching as well. Like I'm a huge fan of Brene Brown and her shame work. So we do some of that. I'm also um, a radical forgiveness practitioner, which is work um, from Colin Tipping, who just passed this year or last year. And that is about how we can reframe a story that we've told over and over and over again mm -hmm. about how something happened in our life. Okay. And that sometimes forgiveness comes in seeing that there was a lesson in it for our benefit instead of to punish us. And so it's this very particular way of reframing a particular incident in life that has created trauma and that has created such a patterning in the brain that it's kept us in a loop mm -hmm. and it's influenced how we make decisions, it's influenced the choices that we make, it's influenced um, the actions we take every day, what we think is possible in our lives, and it's limiting. And to not forgive yourself, it's basically about forgiving yourself for a decision that you made um, and forgiving the other person in it. And forgiving doesn't mean that we're forgetting or we're letting mm. somebody off the hook. Yes. But you know, there's a saying that um, when you don't forgive, the only person you're keeping in prison is yourself. yourself. So when we can get to that point where we can see it from a different perspective, um, sometimes there's liberation in that. And so that's in there too. So okay. there's a bunch of stuff in that. Like and I think stuff. I saw there's a class coming up about that. Because I think I told my husband, I'm like, I think we should go to that where you you can – Sign up to do oh, your birth chart. Yeah, so that's the, right, that's the Kabbalah blueprint. Yeah, course. I want to do that. Yeah. I'm signing up. Yeah, the blueprint courses, we teach you um, how to figure out. So in the planetary lineup, right, we have nine planets in the solar system that we use. But um, it teaches you how to figure out your first two, which rule over your daily life. And so how those influence you in all aspects of your life and what you can do um, to bring balance back to your life. It will also, like if you know like your husband's or your partner's or your children's planets, um, you know their tendencies. And so you know how to speak to them because you know what could happen if they're out of balance, right? So um, it gives you a lot of insight into each other. I am so excited. Yeah, and we always say like, if we, when you start to do Nam Yoga, if you are a person who's not married... <laughs> When you go on a date, the first thing you'll ask them is their birthday so you can do their planets <laughs> so that you can find out who they are. <laughs> I love yeah, it. Yeah, it gives you a lot of information, actually. Not, not what, what your sign is. No, not what your we're sign is. We're going deeper. We're going deeper, yeah. We're, we're going on, like, literally the energetic component of who you are. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is there anything else you would like to share or add that perhaps we haven't touched on today? What do I want to share? I want, you know, I, I want to share that more times than not, um, people come through our doors um, having had an experience in yoga before where they – felt like they couldn't do something or they weren't fit enough or um, they're too old or whatever the ex whatever the situation was and um, we this studio here isn't what we consider an all ability studio um, adaptive studio so anyone can come in and we will find a way for you to do yoga even if that means somebody else moving your arms and legs for you so that's very important um, we're all inclusive um, to the point of, I'm so proud of him, so I'm going to say it. Um, <laughs> we have a student, and his name is Connor. He um, has autism. Okay. And um, he started coming to class a year ago, and little by little becomes more um, vocal and mm. communicative with people around him to the point where he wanted to learn how to be a yoga teacher, oh. um, which was amazing. And so he did um, um, privately taught awesome. him for the last year. Uh, he did 200 hours with me. Wow, and amazing. He, and he's now a yoga teacher here at Nam Yoga. And so um, we, we try to find the in with everybody, meaning the thing that lights everybody up. 
<gasps> and we kind of focus on that. So um, he has this love for Star Wars. Mm-hmm. And so we made a yoga up just for him. Is Ca- that what that was? I yeah. saw it on Facebook. I'm yeah. like, why <laughs> Why is Dr. Cole making everyone wear uh, those masks? <laughs> what is going on over there at Nam Yoga? Yeah, so that's what it was. His class is called Jedi Warrior I Yoga. I love it. And it's yoga practice with lightsabers um it's fantastic right (laughs) so it's what works for him what makes him happy so he loves the flow part of um yoga and he loves to lightsaber and so he teaches people how to combine them and he leads a class every sunday and so we are that space like it doesn't matter what somebody else thinks of you or what they've diagnosed you with or as Mm -hmm. um, to me and to the rest of the people who work here and who are part of our community, you are as whole as you get. Mm -hmm. And so what we need to do is just learn what works for you. And then we work around that. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. Yeah, I love it. I'm really proud of that part of our studio and all of our teachers are that way too. They're all trained and schooled in adaptive yoga and movement practices and we we're very proud of that part of ourselves i love it yeah (laughs) how can people find you what's the best way social media um we Uh, are we are on social media okay um, much to my dismay (laughs) (laughs) um so yeah on facebook we're nam yoga arizona on instagram we're nam arizona um, and then our website is namyogaaz.com. Nam is N-A-A-M, N-A-A-M, yogaaz.com. Um, and our center is in Mesa at uh, 5050 East University Drive. And um, we'd love to have everybody here. <laughs> I'd love to get the word out. Um, yeah. It's been me for about 10 years here in Arizona, and I'm one person, so... Mm. Yeah, but it you is do an amazing work. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm very gr- grateful and very, very honored to be able to do this every yes. day. Yeah. <laughs> I am honored to talk to you. Oh, well, and thank you're you. so full of knowledge about yoga, and especially with the Nam Yoga. I've learned so much oh. <laughs> about Dr. Levery and what oh, he's he. He's pretty amazing. Yes, human being. Yeah. The music, the yeah. meditation. Please, you know, do a little more research about Nam Yoga. Look at the websites and sign up for the classes. Yep. And, and if you events, you have a lot of events. We here. have a lot of events and you can find those on Facebook as well. Mm-hmm. And you can find those on the website. Um, but we have a lot of events, a lot of um, workshops going deeper into the yeah. concepts behind Nam Yoga. There's always something happening here every Friday night at seven. There's a special meditation here, whether it be sound healing, gong, um, a healing circle. There's always something here. And um, and if you're interested in the science behind Nam Yoga, because there is scientific proof in it, yes. um, we do have a website called namscience.org. And so it'll, you. if you have that like analytical brain <laughs> that <laughs> needs scientific proof um, behind spiritual concept, we do have it. Yeah. Thank so. you for sharing that. My pleasure. Yes. Yeah. Before we finish this amazing episode yeah. with your <laughs> lovely soul. I'm so excited because it really <laughs> recorded. <laughs> I know. We made it through. Can you believe it? Yes. <laughs> finish this for me. Yoga is not. <laughs> <laughs> yoga is not a lot of things. Um, the primary one, yoga is not a religion. Yoga is? A daily practice on how to live. Thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you for listening. Please visit the website at www.leveluptribes.com. And please subscribe to the podcast and share with your family and friends. Be sure to tune in to our next episode. Catch you all next time, my beloved tribes.